Kalari is one of those heroes I have loved ever since I first started Paragon. Here in version 44.3, I have made a deck that I thought was pretty cool and I wanted to share with you. So here is my Kalari deck and guide. Marillus Action is a game and screen recorder that offers the lowest megabytes per frame, the lowest computer resource usage, and the highest FPS recording. Check the link in the video description to learn more. So ladies and gentlemen, we first start looking off at the deck. So this is a solo lane, but apparently also a jungle um, deck, as you will see in the gameplay. In the jungle, take Demolitionist, that will help you clear that. You have to go back to base as, as a Clary anyways, so get Demolitionist just to improve that, then you can grab Living Guardian. Living Guardian for the offlane, but actually for the solo lane, you want Taskmaster to help with uh, freezing your lane so you can get that farm. Tireless Reaper just helps with your daggers or going into the shadow plane for going into the shadow plane or just to reduce the cost of kind of whatever you want. Possessed Spriken is a staple here. If you can manage not to get it, you're absolutely amazing, but really you're just going to have to get it for that amazing sustain to keep Clary on the battlefield, keep her farming, keep her relevant. Nitro Boost, just a great card for damage and that movement speed center does as well with her a bonus movement speed already. Invader Mage is a card for curving into the intellect cost of Red Zone, which is a card here that you can go for if you so please. Guard Piercer, obviously tremendously powerful for her opening up with her burst. Death Crawler, Guard Piercer, really, really, really hurtful. Swamp Stalker is fantastic for the solo lane as you'll, you'll likely get that bonus damage whenever you know you are there because you will be alone on clary monstrously powerful heavy hitter is of course uh, amazing as increasing base of damage by 15 percent synergizes with her with her shadow sh shadow walk and obviously death crawler and heavy then obviously the power on heavy hitter next into death crawler is a staple in this deck it makes your first hit out of stealth deal tremendous damage. So this is what you are going for. And then, of course, there is red zone. It's kind of really up to you. Improved Killing Blows and Wealthy is here because Kalari, she just re really requires economy to get that stuff online. And playing smart with her is, her, is what makes her deadly, not necessarily anything else. I haven't gone for Lifesteal or anything like that because you do get 2.5% uh, with the first slot here, so you kind of have Sustain, um, but in order to get Piercing Basic so you deal even more damage on the opening opening shot, that is why we have gone there and nothing there. Mana Generator is another great card, but this deck is kind of a one-trick pony, to be honest with you. Healing Towers and Armored, of all things, this is something you definitely could change just to help so that when you do have Red Zone on, when you come out of stealth, when people come onto you, at least you have 125 point shield. Onslaught is fantastic on Kalari, as you can just go to town in lane, get up your ultimate, and then boom, you can alt over a lot more than you otherwise could. So, like I said, I happen to play her in the jungle here, um, and I get Living Guardian, and this is why it doesn't really work. She just needs that extra pow uh, damage on Demolitionist to clear these faster, uh, so that she doesn't take as much damage, because Living Guardian, I don't honestly think, does too, too much for her here. You just want to clear these first three camps as much as possible, go back to base, get your live get get your living guardian then get your green camp then contest the river buff without demolitionist it's too slow and she takes she takes a lot of damage anyways the first ability we get is shadow walk and this is her staple after uh, after a a few seconds she goes into the shadow plane and can only be revealed by shadow wards or some special cards this is, gives her the stealth that she needs to maneuver and be that high mobility assassin that can deal a lot of damage. Kind of in the late game, she does need that that, that, that economy. Or Guard Pierce. Guard Pierce works really, really well on Kalari. When she comes out of stealth, her very first basic attack while in stealth, so you have to use it in stealth, 
deals 250% extra damage. It's a lot. It's a huge burst of damage, which is why Deathcrawler, that multiplies that by by 250% further, is so good on Kalari. That first hit can be monstrously powerful. So that is her bread and butter. You have to wash out, though, when she comes out of stealth, there is a cooldown that comes that, that that happens so you have to be careful using it real like using it really quick and then attacking immediately it'll be on a longer cooldown than if you were to use that entire duration so you have to be careful with with stealth um as she's very very squishy she's very squishy the next ability that you get probably is going to be your dagger your sh your shadow dagger which is a which is a skill shot that's very hard to land the projectile is very 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 small very small her knife is very small and you got to be very very particular with it you can use this dagger especially in the in the solo lane to hit to hit minions that are that that are low that that you can last hit from afar and from safety and that is a really big, big big thing as you see right there it doesn't cost very much mana so if you can't win that solo lane at least you can stay there and get the last hits with your dagger uh that is very very important that you know and that may be the first uh, that may be the first um ability you get to be to, to be honest with you just so you can get those last hits what it also does is apply a massive slow now uh when you hit so obviously open up on on the enemy and then as they're trying to run away out of melee range hit them with with, with the dagger and slow them down it has a very very long range so you can snipe people for, for for the kill as i do a couple times in this game um but really use it for that slow and and yes if anybody is low health and they're getting away the third ability you probably want to get is called shadow dancer what happens is it grants you health regen while you are stealth so it there there is a sustained component to kalari while she is in cell she can get some good health regen but it's not too too much and shadow dancer is or her shadow walk is fairly high cost so going into the shadow realm just for health regen it just helps her it's not really a crux that you can use too too much the second and more important part of this ability is that you can double jump so when you jump up you can t press your space bar or the x key to, to to jump further and then she can double jump from there so actually i guess technically triple jump this is fantastic to getting away, traversing terrain. It, in, in this spot right here, you can jump over here into the river. It's a fantastic ability to get away from people, to really confuse, because you can hit your, your shadow walk, and then there's a brief delay before going into the shadow realm. You can jump up into the air, usually disorienting your enemy, and then you can go into stealth while you are in the air and they have no idea where you are and you totally disorient them use this very very appropriately so it's on a fairly long cooldown and you can obviously use it to dodge skill shots and just be elusive it's a really key ability that it takes a it takes a while to get used to Kalari's gameplay being sneaky when to deal damage when not to where to be and etc etc at this point, we have our ultimate, and it's uh, it's it's pretty crazy. What happens is when you press Kalari's ultimate, you gr you gain vision of the entire enemy team. You gain vision of the entire enemy team. Then what happens is you can lock onto a target anywhere on the map, an enemy target anywhere on the map, and then you teleport to them and slow them tremendously while you are teleporting and then you deal your basic attack damage um on that enemy and i it may have extra damage i'm i'm, I'm not too certain it is a phenomenal ability obviously this allows you to be anywhere on the map and still have a relative presence with the onslaught gem which is uh our intellect tier one intellect gem we can reduce this cooldown tremendously well you can use this constantly you're farming you're hitting targets in lane and as you can see i use it right here 
to secure the kill on that Severog. I'm careful with, when using this. There is a time when my duo wins over the enemy duo, and I could have ulted in, maybe secure those kills, but they got them. And it just depends. How much do you want to help your team? When do you got to go? When should you use your ultimate? And as you can see there, I wanted to secure that kill since my Severog couldn't. It's a amazing ability that you can use to always put pressure on the enemy team keep them on their toes and really a lot of the time you know you can turn the tide of battle what is a 1v1 now is all of a sudden is a 2v1 or what is a 2v1 all of a sudden is a 2v2 so is you have to use this ability usually play playing mind tricks and helping out your team now at this point in this jungle so far, as, as we're playing here, here in the jungle, I have possessed Spryken and it's fantastic. As you saw earlier, I was able to kind of trade with the Severog with my Severog. I'm here in this in, in, in this mid lane trying to help out my Belika. I couldn't secure the kill on the Morgesh and I decided not to alt in on her because, well, she's under tower and running through her inhibitors and, and, and whatnot. Possessed Spryken is amazing. What really makes it viable in this deck is that if you get it you're losing that card slot but you got red zone which is huge economy card and it kind of doesn't even matter that you don't have that card slot so if you if you get possessed spike in you kind of have to go for for red zone in the super late game because you'll have no nowhere uh, for your economy to go and with this green buff and and again that possessed I feel actually fairly confident in Engaging on on on, on this duo. I do take a tremendous amount of damage as Severog is uh, Pretty busted, but I am able to stick around here and and regenerate just a bit Unfortunately, I don't help out this Bellica and map awareness is Kalari's biggest thing she is surprisingly a very MOBA-esque hero she is a great off laner uh in 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 in, in the solo lane as you're probably going to play play her there maybe maybe in the jungle she can push that that wave non-stop and with her ultimate easily be anywhere on the map that she needs to be especially with that onslaught gem so just remember to always 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 be keeping an eye on your mini map and with your stealth put pressure on the enemy team as you are a stealthy assassin you have to be careful you're an assassin so you're very squishy possess breaking does give you good sustain in the early game but you're still an assassin so as you can see i go for high priority targets like this sparrow i unfortunately miss with my first attack which is very very important and i choose to i choose to to alt on her but the bellica gets the kill anyways i am able to continue to continue this this trade here because the possessed spragon is so good on on kalari and with that double jump i can get out of there but morgesh does her thing so here's here's an engagement where we kind of i help out my severog with the enemy severog here who's who, who has been bullying my severog quite a bit I do have that tremendous sustain with that with with possessed Spryken and really use that in, in in this earlier part. And there is the the dagger to secure the kill. Kalari is very interesting that she's she has burst with her stealth and coming out of stealth, and you really have to utilize that. Harass the enemy at first with a few with a few stealth attacks and then and then retreating. And then there comes a point when you know you can trade with the enemy, with, with the enemy hero, or a couple of them somehow. You have to whittle them down first, and then you, and and then you can commit to to the kill. Nah, you you cannot be a fighter with Kalari. You can't just sit there and 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 kind of trade with somebody. You have to poke them down with coming out of stealth a few times, and then once once you get them low, then you know that you can that then you can confirm that kill or of course be there so that when you're when your friendly team take gets them low you can confirm it for them and that's kind of where what role kalari fits fits in if there's a really strong foursome on on your team kalari can be a fantastic fifth she can again push lane put great pressure force enemy heroes to 
to deal with her in that in in in, in that solo lane, and then when your foursome's doing good work elsewhere on the map, maybe uh, uh, with a four v four, then she can alt over with her ultimate and make it a five v four. That's really what she is. She's an she's a really interesting MOBA esque hero, like l l like I like I like to say that you just need to kind of know when she when she is viable. This is a really interesting moment here. I use my ultimate with with my with the enemy team barreling down this mid lane as they're they're really going hard for my Fey there. And I don't alt in. You don't have to confirm confirm your ultimate to teleport. All what you can do is use it for vision because it reveals the enemy team and not teleport. And what I actually did there was the enemy team stopped in their tracks there, was looking around, waiting for me to teleport in, but I didn't. And I think, I, I would like to think that I kind of saved my, my, uh, my, my Fey there because the enemy team stopped thinking that I would alt in and that I would be easy pickings. Don't alt in on a lost cause. If, you, if, if somebody is way overextended and they, they need help, it's a, you know, it's a 2v1 for the enemy team, don't alt in. Just like Muriel, sometimes you have to let allies go um, and just let them die. Don't alt in, um, and especially don't alt in to grouped enemies as, as soon as you alt in, they can immediately just control you and boom, you're dead. So in terms of upgrading your abilities, it kind of depends. If you need the dagger to deal damage from afar to confirm more last hits, especially in the laning phase, in the solo lane, if you're getting harassed, upgrade that. If you want more sustain, you can upgrade your Shadow Dancer. Although, be careful because upgrading your, 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 your stealth, your Shadow Walk, increases the duration of, 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 of your stealth, and which therefore increases the health, health regen duration so most of the time upgrading upgrading your shadow walk is just going to be better period as it just extends the duration of when she can of when she can stay in in, in stealth after that it's kind of up to you i would say save shadow dance for last do your shadow walk definitely because the duration of staying in 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 stealth is really quite significant do that then your then your dagger, and then your shadow, uh, sh shadow dancer. Obviously, your alt whenever possible. Now, at this point, you can see that I was, I was dealing with a, w with a lane, for seeing that that's that Severog there to, to to deal with me in in that in, in that right lane. But then I ulted in and helped my team with this engagement, and now we're just barreling down the mid lane after we're kind of snowballing in this. In this engagement, and I confirmed some kills with my dagger. At this point, we're dealing some good damage. We go. We're, uh, I have heavy hitter and invader mage, and it's up to you what path you want to take. Basically, you can be just like carry with with Clary, go all agility into death crawler and heavy hitter. I wouldn't go farther than death crawler and heavy hitter, however, because the eight cost of heavy hitter. Can, can transition into your um, your red zone. So I wouldn't go farther than Deathcrawler and and Heavy Hitter, as you can then transition into red zone real nice, but it's up to you. In this case, I'm going for red zone because my team seems to seems to be doing really well. I'm, I'm thinking that if I can get red zone and I can come in at, at the right time, not only am I going to be dealing a tr tremendous amount of damage, but as soon as I come out of stealth, then boom, all of the enemies around me take more damage. All of my allies around me deal more damage, and it, it can be significant. So I'm going for red zone here. I, th I, I would say go for Deathcrawler Heavy Hitter, and then go for red zone. It's a high economy build. It's a high economy deck, but you do scale, you, you do scale well. Invader Mage is there for you if you're going for heavy um, red zone like I am, so I can have at least some power uh, on on 
on Kalari as we're going for for red zone. There's not much you can curve with the vitality, unfortunately, which is why I kind of went for armor because I want to get some value about go for for going for that much vitality. But it's kind of up to you. I would suggest death crawler, heavy hitter into death crawler, then into then into your red zone. What you just saw me there was actually I don't think it's intended. I don't think Kalari should be able to do it. But if you get if you step right on top of a ward and then use their shadow dagger right on the ward, you can actually damage the ward and then take it out. I'm not sure if it's still in the game. I didn't. I, I wasn't sure if I one shot that ward. It actually looks like um, it can't do that. So you can't do that anymore. I thought maybe you were able to. That'd be a really good tip there. Right now, I'm just playing mind games with this team. I showed my face in in that in, in that inhibitor just to. Just to make sure that they knew I was there and and, and push them back. Kalari is all about mind games and being very sneaky. And there you go, guys. It's pretty much the end of the game. I didn't really feel like I did too much in this in this match, but we still win. So there you guys go. I will say, go check out CM Stark on Twitch. An amazing Paragon streamer. He is a fantastic Kalari. Rank 13, something like that. He's nuts. I am definitely not the best Kalari. So go check him out. Ask him about Kalari. This is my deck. It's a bit silly going for, for red zone, but I thought I would share it for, with, with you because I enjoyed it and had some fun. Patreon allows creators to offer their fans a way of supporting them and what they do. With flexible and painless payment options, anyone can support their creator for as little as $1 a month. If you would like to help me do what I love, check out the link in the video description to learn more. Please like this video if you like it, dislike it, if you dislike it, share it with the community, of course, guys, subscribe if you guys like this, especially if you found it useful, please subscribe so I can do it for you in the future. Got a lot of stuff coming up for December, don't want you to miss a thing. Please check the video description for links to my website, merchandise store, and Amazon affiliate link, as well as all my social media, and a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters, Twitch, support, uh, Twitch subscribers, and YouTube sponsors who make all these videos possible. Till next time, like always, stay optimistic, and positive.